So for those who push back on AI and agent decoding, I just wanted to kind of give you a sneak peek about how agent decoding kind of looks. And you can be the judge to tell me if it seems like it's more productive than coding. So I have my Agentic Jumpstart course platform site running locally. And by the way, if you are interested in a course that's going to teach you how to use Cursor Cloud Code and do Agentic coding to be more productive, go check out my agenticjumpstart.com and join the waitlist. But well, we have this running locally and I have a new route. So let's start with traditional coding. I'm not going to use any tab completion or Cursor Composer or Cloud Code. We're just going to make a people array. Okay, so I'm going to show you how fast I can kind of code that up without using AI assistance. We'll say name, Alice, we'll say savings. We'll say 100 or 1000 okay and we probably need a couple of these so like we'll just copy and paste this a couple times we'll make this bob make this uh bill we'll make this john change up the saving sum okay this whole thing right now could have been like made with just a cursor prompt but we're going to keep going and just try to build this out by hand so now we got to map this thing over and we're going to loop over every person and make a div okay so like this we do have to give a key so i'll say key is equal to person dot name we can save that. Now we actually want to display, maybe in an H2, we could say person.name and then also the savings. So like we could do a paragraph tag here, say person.savings, and then we can save this. Okay, so right now this is a bunch of tedious stuff that I have to code out by hand. But now let's say that your product owner or someone says, hey, okay, now you need to actually display the total amount of savings of all these people uh, in, a, in a card somewhere. Okay, so now we're going to have to do like a total savings of everybody and then we're gonna have to like loop over this so hopefully you know how to write a reduce function which most people don't even know how to do that so let's give it a pass that we'll say object and then we're gonna go ahead and just say acc plus object dot savings start with the zero for the sum okay now we have a total savings we can just go ahead and put that in a div somewhere all right and i'll say like total savings okay so here it is. Now we have to actually spend time formatting it, right? So hopefully you know how to do like tailwind or something. So let's do like a div here. And then we're going to say class name. We're going to give it a grid. Grid calls three. Probably give it a gap of eight. Make sure I spell that correctly. Okay, here we go. And now we can give this stuff some styling here. Say so class name, border, uh, BG gray of like, I don't know, 950 or something, padding of four. And this should hopefully start looking a little bit better. Okay, actually probably round the corners here. So we'll say like rounded. Okay, here we go. So hopefully I'm like highlighting the fact that like it's a bunch of tedious stuff when it comes to coding. And I'm going to do this whole thing over just by doing agent decoding. So let's just delete all this because we're just honestly wasting time right here. So I'm going to go here and say const people is equal to. And then again, we'll say like name Alice savings. And I'll go here and I'll say like make six of these people. Go ahead and kick that off. And while that's running, I'm going to go ahead and just keep on coding down here and just tab complete um, a map. So I'll say people dot map. We're going to go ahead and just do this. All right, and then we're gonna do the same thing with just showing the savings here. Tab complete that all out. Okay, total savings are not defined, so I probably need to do a reduce here. Let's say const total savings. Look at that, we got a reduce. We can actually style this over here. And now let's go and refresh. We got the same thing, and this took us like, what, 20 seconds, 10 seconds? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, let's keep this. I'm gonna go here, and I want to actually kick this off and say, please restyle this with my existing code styles for cards and headers and page, et cetera. Let's just go ahead and let the agent automatically refactor this for us. And we can kind of just watch this thing go live here. Okay, it's going through and it's gonna go ahead and go through all this stuff and hopefully it looks good. Let's save this and go back. And now it looks a little bit better, but again, this doesn't match the style of my application. So now we're gonna kick into real agent decoding. I'm gonna load up a panel over here. I'm gonna use Sonnet and now I'm gonna say, can you please refactor this? Use my page component, my page header component, and make sure you use the proper card component I have in the Shad scene UI directory and make this match another page, for example, the analytics page of how this kind of looks. Okay. I am using Super Whisper for the voice to text. It's much faster to speak than it is to type. Let's just let this agent run and it's going to refactor this whole file and probably make it look a lot better because one argument people always make about agent decoding is that the code it generates is pretty sloppy. Overall, I mean, this is just a static page, so there's like really not that complex functionality going on here. But when Sonnet is done running, this page is going to look a lot better and it's going to match the existing theme that I have in my application. All right, so if you look through here, it added the page, the page header, some cards, some summaries and stuff like that. Let's just accept this and go back. And now we have the people dashboard. It looks like this. Pretty cool. We have the card styles and this actually matches the exact same layout of some of my other pages, right? So if I go back, we have the agent marketplace this new one looks basically like it. We got animations, it looks pretty good. Now let's extend this some more. Let's go ahead and add the ability to add in a new person. That's gonna show a dialogue with a form with client-side validation. Also the ability to delete 
people from this list. So let's just go ahead and type that out. I'm going to say, this is great, but can you also add a button in the top right corner next to the header, which allows us to show a dialogue to enter in a person's name and their value or their, their savings. Make sure this has React hook form with client-side validation and always keep the button enabled so when they click it, we can show the client-side validation. After adding this button in the dialogue, please add a delete button next to all the people's cards so we can delete these people after they've been created. All right, while this is cooking, let's just you know kick off a stopwatch and see how long does it take it to refactor this to use everything I just said. Now, the great thing about this is while this is actually trying to modify this page, I can open up a new chat window and start modifying a different page if I want to, right? You can do a bunch of context switching and modify various pages at the same time. And you can do this with cursor or clawed code. And you don't even have to like code that much anymore. All right, it looks like it's actually finishing up here. So like we could probably just go and see how this looks. It took about a minute and 12 seconds. Now, if we go back to our app, okay, here we go. We got this, we can delete the people. We can go up here, we can add the person. Go ahead and click on this. We'll say like $5,099, added it in. That also updates then. So let's just add in one more person. It was like Sally with one. Add that in, okay. So again, like, could you add this by hand? Probably. Is it faster to prompt an agent to do all this in about a minute and 11 seconds? Absolutely. So I just wanna say like, I'm one developer and within like a couple of minutes, I'm able to trend out a whole page. I grant that it's not hooked into a backend API. It's not hooked into persistence database storage or anything like that. But when you've been coding for a long time, and I've been doing it for 12 years, there's so much time you waste moving code around, refactoring code, typing syntax errors, and then backspacing and having to fix them. And it's just super tedious. But now we have these tools that basically allow us to just prompt. And we can even speak into it now. Like I definitely recommend using something like Super Whisper or Whisper Flow so that you can just speak your mind, what you want into your microphone and have the agent automatically add it for you. So again, this is just a sneak peek of how agentic coding can look. I'm not saying this replaces the need to code or software engineers. Sometimes it will generate bugs and you have to get your hands dirty and fix them. But this is how it can look. And this is how I have seen it with the various things I've added into this application. Be sure to check out agenticjumpstart.com. I'm gonna teach you how to use cursor, how to use cloud code and how to do exactly what I did at a slower pace, of course, to teach you how to interact with LLMs, how to properly prompt and how to use these tools out with multiple concurrent things, all modifying your code base at the same time. All right, thanks for watching and happy coding.